subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chanzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday the 6th of September. Indian Prime Minister Modi hails 100% first dose vaccination in hill state of Himachal Pradesh. Taliban claim control of Panjshir promise formation of government soon. And Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan dropped people of food and vote says Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday lauded Northern Himachal Pradesh for becoming the first state to vaccinate 100% of its eligible population with the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine and said that the state has given him an opportunity to be proud. Meanwhile, India on Monday logged 38,948 new coronavirus infections and 219 fresh fatalities, the lowest in 167 days. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday interacted with healthcare workers and beneficiaries of the COVID vaccination program in Hill State of Himachal Pradesh through video conferencing. Himachal Pradesh is the first state in the country where every single beneficiary has received the first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. Prime Minister Modi congratulated Himachal Pradesh for this achievement, saying that it achieved this feat by working as a team. After Himachal Pradesh, Sikkim and Dadra and Nagar Haveli have vaccinated 100% of their population with the first dose of vaccines. सौ वर्ष की सबसे बड़ी महामारी के विरुद्ध लड़ाई में हिमाचल प्रदेश चैंपियन बनकर के सामने आया है हिमाचल भारत का पहला राज्य बना है जिसने अपनी पूरी एलिजिबल आबादी को कोरोना टीके की कम से कम एक डोज लगा ली है यही नहीं दूसरी डोज के मामले में भी हिमाचल लगभग एक तिहाई आबादी को पार कर चुका है India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has surpassed the cumulative figure of 687.54 million as per provisional reports till 7 a.m. local time Monday. Indian government is committed to accelerating the pace and expanding the scope of COVID-19 vaccination throughout the country. Meanwhile, India logged 38,948 new coronavirus infections, taking the total tally of COVID-19 cases to 33.02 million on Monday. The death toll climbed to 440,752, with 219 fresh fatalities, the lowest in 167 days. Prominent Indian farmer leader Rakesh Tikhat on Monday said. The three new agricultural laws are a bigger threat than coronavirus as they will stifle the farmers slowly. He asserted the months-long farmer agitation against the legislation will continue until it is repealed. Asserting that the farmers' agitation against the three new farm laws will continue until they are repealed, prominent Indian farmer leader Rakesh Tikhat on Monday said. The agricultural laws are a bigger threat than the coronavirus as they will stifle the farmers slowly. His remarks came a day after hundreds of thousands of farmers staged the biggest rally yet in Muzaffarnagar in northern Uttar Pradesh state in a months-long series of demonstrations against the three farm laws, which farmers say will hurt their livelihood and leave them with scant bargaining power against big private retailers and food processors. Corona. एक बार मारेगा ये तो तिल तिल मारेंगे जो इनके कानून हैं तो कोरोना से बड़ा भयंकर तो कानून है आज देश में ये जो कृषि के जो कानून लेकर आ रहे हैं जो पूरे सर्विस सेक्टर को बेचने लग रहे हैं तो ये बड़े हैं कोरोना से बड़े हैं ये 
The government says the measures introduced last September allows farmers to directly sell their produce to big buyers outside government regulated wholesale markets and will help them get better prices. Since November last year, tens of thousands of farmers have camped on major highways to the capital New Delhi to oppose the laws. Farmer leaders and the centre government have held several rounds of talks, but the impasse remains. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban claimed victory on Monday over opposition forces in the Panjshir Valley, northeast of Kabul, declaring that it completed the Islamist group's takeover of Afghanistan and promising to announce a new government soon. Taliban spokesman Zebullah Mujahid confirmed seizing control over the last holdout province of Afghanistan's 34 provinces. However, the opposition National Resistance Front of Afghanistan, led by Ahmad Massoud, denied the Taliban claims of seizing the valley. A Taliban video uploaded on Monday showed the insurgent group raising their flag at the Panjshir governor's office, with the Holdar province being the latest and final opposition stronghold to fall to the Taliban. Earlier, Taliban in a statement on Monday announced that its forces had completely captured Afghanistan's northeastern Panjshir province. Pictures on social media show Taliban members standing in front of the gate of the Panjshir provincial governor's compound after fighting over the weekend with the opposition forces, National Resistance Front of Afghanistan. Taliban spokesman Zebullah Mujahid told a news conference on Monday that after capturing Panjshir, the Taliban controlled the entire country and wished for people within the nation to cooperate. Mujahid said a new Afghan government would be announced soon, but he did not specify when. The National Resistance Front of Afghanistan, led by Panjshiri leader Ahmad Massoud, denied the Taliban claims of seizing the valley. Massoud, in an audio message on his Facebook page, said the resistance forces are still present in Panjshir and continue to fight Taliban forces while confirming the bombardment by Pakistan and Taliban in the region killed resistance front spokesman Fahim Dashti. He also revealed the Taliban is getting air support from the Pakistan Air Force and the spy agency ISI. This comes as Pakistan ISI Chief Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid is currently in Afghanistan to oversee the new government formation led by the Taliban. In news from Pakistan, the tehreek e taliban Pakistan has claimed responsibility for their suicide bomb attack that killed at least four Pakistani paramilitary soldiers in Balochistan on Sunday. A senior Pakistani official had said last week that Islamabad is worried about militant fighters from the Pakistani Taliban group crossing from Afghanistan and launching lethal attacks on its territory. At least four Pakistani paramilitary soldiers were killed and 20 wounded in a suicide attack in Quetta in southwest Balochistan province on Sunday, officials said, part of a spike in attacks on security forces in recent weeks as neighboring Afghanistan fell to the Taliban. TTP, the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan, claimed responsibility for the attack. The group, which is separate from the Afghan Taliban, renewed its allegiance to it after the fall of Kabul last month and has recently stepped up its campaign against the Pakistani army. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan condemned the attack in a tweet and said he salutes sacrifices by security forces to keep the country safe from foreign-backed terrorist designs. A senior Pakistani official had said last week that Islamabad is worried about militant fighters from the Pakistani Taliban group crossing from Afghanistan and launching lethal attacks on its territory. Pakistan had also last Thursday, citing security concerns, temporarily closed its crucial Chaman border crossing in Balochistan amid an influx of Afghan refugees following Taliban's takeover in Afghanistan. More news from Pakistan. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Sunday hit out at Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan and blamed him 
of robbing the people of their money, meals and vote amid an unprecedented inflation in the country. Addressing a huge public gathering, he urged people to support and said his party will not forgive Prime Minister Khan. PPP, the Pakistan People's Party chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari said on Sunday that Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has betrayed the trust of the citizens and robbed them of their money, meals and vote, adding that his party will not forgive him. Addressing a grand rally in Dera Ghazi Khan city, Bilawal hit out at the ruling PTI government and said, the people are being hurt and every citizen is troubled. He said that the Prime Minister has left 20,000 people unemployed despite his promises of providing jobs and houses. He asserted that Khan in the name of encroachment will also rob the people of the roof over their heads. The remarks come in the backdrop of unprecedented inflation and unemployment in the country. Reports suggest during the weekend the multi-party opposition alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement in a meeting decided to hold around 30 rallies by the end of 2021 to pressurize PM Imran Khan-led government to resign. In news from Nepal, the Nepal government on Sunday warned citizens against carrying out any reprehensible and disgraceful actions that may hurt the dignity of the friendly nations objecting to recent demonstrations during which effigies of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi were burned. In a statement, Nepal's interior ministry said it was strongly committed to not allowing actions that might hurt Nepal's quest to have friendly ties with other nations. The effigies of PM Modi were burnt allegedly by some students and youth organizations belonging to both the ruling alliance and the opposition during protests over the death of a Nepalese youth when he was crossing the Mahakali River near the border with India in July. The ministry said any dispute or issues that crop up with the neighbouring country will be resolved diplomatically. With Ganesh Chaturthi festival just around the corner, artisans in India who make idols of elephant-headed Hindu Lord Ganesh said they are facing hardships amid the pandemic. They said they are not getting a good response from buyers this year due to COVID-19 restrictions which are also bound to subdue the celebrations. With Ganesh Chaturthi just round the corner, artisans who make idols of elephant-headed Hindu Lord Ganesh in southern India are facing hardships as they are not getting good response from buyers this year amid the pandemic. Ganesh Chaturthi, a 10-day festival that starts on the fourth day of the Hindu calendar month of Bhadrapada, will start on September 10 this year. The artisans in southern Madurai city said that this year they were hoping for some good profit but now it is becoming difficult for them to survive as people are not buying the idols amid COVID-19 restrictions that are bound to subdue the celebrations. Similar situation is being faced by artisans in Vijayawada in southern Andhra Pradesh state. They expressed they have taken loans from money lenders at high interest rates for making the idols this year. But due to poor business amid strict COVID-19 restrictions in the state, they are unable to sell big idols for larger gatherings. They appealed to the government to allow festival committees to install at least 2 feet to 5 feet idols adhering to the COVID-19 norms. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. 
breaking news and views from India.